So thank you, Matthias, for introducing me. So we're going to speak now about uh, Alfresco, Content Management System. My name is Philippe Dubois, and I'm working for Alfresco since, let's say, one year. OK. Uh, what is Alfresco? Alfresco is a document management and web content management open source platform. Um, so as I just mentioned in the title, it covers two main areas of document management, let's say, the pure document management platform and the web content management platform, which focuses uh, more about uh, web publishing publishing uh, websites and maintain websites and coordinate the teams that will build the, the website. Uh, where does Alfresco, where does it come from? Where, who, who created Alfresco? There are two main, uh, it's, it was co-founded by two uh, persons, John Newton, which was, which was the co-founder of Documentum, which was also involved in document management and John Powell, the former CEO of Business Object. And they started in January 2005. And uh, maybe other general information about Alfresco, where are we located? Let's say the idea is to having the engineering located in, in UK, in Middenhead. And um, some of those other employees are uh, spread all over Europe. Let's say uh, uh, Germany, Belgium, France, uh, Luxembourg. And we have also uh, a set of uh, engineers located in the in, um, US. I mean, not on a single location, but spread all over the US. So what was the main idea uh, they had, uh, I mean, the co-founders, when they started Alfresco? The key concept is the commoditization. That means they wanted to to give access to everybody to a kind of high-end uh, document management system. And what they, what they were focusing on is efficiency of development and manufacturing. It's general characteristic of commoditization, efficiency of distribution, increasing the quality uh, and based on high volume distribution <coughs> and reduce the cost. And then they, they decided, they found out that the open source could be a, a, a good way to achieve that or to, to, you know, to go that direction. And why? Because uh, they discovered that they could lower the cost of development and uh, they, they could rely on community for s such things like uh, translations and also some improvement, testing and so on. They could also use the best breed open source components and also they had access to world-class engineers who were interested to join the team and work with us. They also discovered, obviously, that uh, they could distribute their product at low cost uh, through the internet and SourceForge. And they could also, they, 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 they also try to uh, lower the, the, the price of, uh, you know, distribution. And, uh, one key point is that, let's say, if you take a, a, a document management like Documentum to sell for maybe three dollars, you have to invest two dollars in, in commercial, uh, you know, uh, expenses and so on. So here the model is discovering Alfresco through the internet. You targeting a huge audience to the internet, and then they can download, use it, test it, and see if it covers their need. And um, obviously, we try to achieve high quality by using uh, the community for testing. Uh, so we're going to speak about a, a bit more in details about the document management functionalities. Uh, on that part, we have uh, the concept of smart spaces. We have ACL on, and security on those spaces. We can uh, propose a single sign-on. We can manage groups and roles on those spaces. And why are they called smart spaces? It's because we, you can set up rules and through, 
triggering those rules, you will trigger actions, and uh, th those actions will also be performed by aspects, let's say. So we call it an intelligent file system. And um, also one of the main goal of Alfresco was to make it uh, transparent and easy to use by, by, by the users. And what could be easier than a shared drive? Okay, that just people doesn't know they're using a document management system. They just put the, the file into the, the virtual shared drive and it, it just enters the content management system, but you don't have to train your users. You just tell them, put your document there, and then they will be versioned by the system. They will be uh, maybe transformed, but the, the, let's say the secretary won't have to bother to learn a lot about the user interface of the system. Um, we also include functionalities like uh, office integration. That means we interface with uh, uh, office uh, suite. We have advanced workflow. We also having uh, Alfresco dashboard and web scripts. That means users can develop their own custom interfaces using web scripts and uh, visualize their data to components called dashboards. We're offering a lot, a wide range of uh, access protocols like CIFS, FTP, WebDAV, HTTP. And also, we intend to achieve uh, scalability through clustering. Um, okay, this is a, a general representation of the Alfresco architecture. Um, on the center, you have the, the content repository. And the content repository relies on full text indexes. Uh, it's uh, we're using Lucene as a full text engine. Uh, the storage is mainly done through uh, file system, and uh, metadata is stored in databases. On the right part, you can see the high availability stuff. You can see also other. If I go. Uh, on the web service, yeah, you have a web service API for Alfresco. You can interface with what, what they call the knowledge portals, with portals. You can uh, design your own web applications. And again, you have access through virtual file systems. Uh, like you, you, you can see there that you have FTP, CIFS, and WebDAV, but you, you have even other protocols implemented. This is a the view of the web, the HTTP uh, interface of Alfresco. As you can see, you, 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 you can visualize in your folder, in your smart space, you can visualize the folders and you can visualize the files. On the left, you have a kind of uh, navigation uh, toolbar. And on the top, you have a uh, also a general toolbar about the, the well-known locations into Alfresco repository and also uh, a small box where you can do some search. This is the same data, the same repository, but seen through the WebDAV interface. As you can see, you, can, you, 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 can, you have the same folders and the same documents. And again, same thing. I could have done it with CIFS, but here it's a bit different. It's what we call a dashlet. That means it's a small component that can be used to visualize and browse your data and enter new documents and so on. That dashlet was developed using uh, uh, Ajax technology and web scripts. We, we, we're gonna go back later on, on, on the web script. That's, was it. That's it for the document management functionalities. Then now let's go through the WCM, Web Content Management Functionalities. So you can author your content using XML. It's kind of uh, presentation independent. Multi-channel content publishing. That means you can distribute uh, or uh, produce or format the output of, of, of your uh, site in different formats. You can uh, produce it in HTML or whatever. 
Uh, one key concept of the WCM system in Alfresco is the sandbox. That means every information provider, every person that will enter the, the new pages or the information will have its, its, its own vision of the site and won't disturb the others. That means he can do everything he wants and he won't uh, interfere with others. That means we have the, the concept of sandboxing, which is very important and which is one of the main characteristics, one of the ma main features of uh, Alfresco uh, system. We have uh, content deployment. That means we can publish the information. We, we have link validation. We can manage the content. I mean, uh, you can decide at what time the content will be available or removed from your site. We have dashlets, again. We can also use uh, workflows. We can create new user, obviously, and we can enter the information using web forms. Obviously, we can create new web projects. We can import dynamic websites, and so on, and so on. And I'm going to skip it because you will have the slides and I will be short on time. So let's go to the technical part, let's say. So Alfresco is based on Java platform. We have used Spring as a cornerstone for our application. So we, we built the application around Spring. And uh, main, the main functionalities that were implemented using Spring, I mean, is security through method interceptors, uh, transaction again through method interceptor, aud audit trail, and also multilingual functionalities on content and metadata. So what are the other open source components integrated in Alfresco? Because Alfresco is a set of open source components that we have put together. We have glued it using uh, Spring. You have the full text indexing, which is based on Lucene. The database independence was ensured using Hibernate. The web page generation is, used, uh, is uh, achieved using GSF. And the document transformation, we have used some libraries like Imagic, or also we have used OpenOffice. The templating, we have used FreeMarker and XSLT. Workflow, we have used uh, GBoss, GBPM. The scripting, we have implemented scripting on server side, and it's, uh, we have used Rhino. We have also integrated uh, P PHP on server side. And uh, we, we have in incorporated into Alfresco the MediaWiki, which is the engine that uh, uh, Wikipedia uses. What, uh, small words about the API structure in Alfresco. Uh, the, the API is structured around the concept of services and what is a service in Alfresco uh, uh, structure. It's the lowest API level you should interact with. That means you shouldn't interfere on lower layers with lower layers of Alfresco implementation. Amongst those services, you have the node service, the file folder service, the authentication service, and so on. A few words about the web scripts. Uh, the, the, the aim of implementing web scripts is to use uh, the, the, the REST API. That means all the parameters are put into the URL. And uh, it's extensible. That means you can decide where will be your parameters into the URL, and you can create or recreate your own API if you want. So the, there are two, let's say, if you want to write a web script, there are three parts that you have to, to design. The first will be uh, the format of the URLs that will be uh, accepted by your web script, and then you will build your model, and then you will present your model, you will transform it, and present it using free, mar free marker, uh, mainly, yeah. You could use maybe XSLT. So there, there are no limits using web scripts, because uh, you can create your own API that suits your own needs, and that fits your, your own business model, your own, mod your own business. This is a schema explaining, let's say, how a request is handled when, when you're using the web scripts. 
So you have the web scripts REST dispatcher, which will analyze and extract the parameters from, from your, your URL. Then we're going to build the, the, the model, the data model, using JavaScript. And that data model will be given to the free marker. And the free marker will render the, the answer. And you can also use it to build uh, Ajax applications. That's how the dashlet was built. And uh, you can see the format can be different and multiple. And this is the last page showing you where you can find more information about Alfresco. But you're welcome if you want to ask any question after the speech. Thank you. <laughs>